gonna start talking. What's going on, y'all? Um, I was going through a real old, old photo album of mine. Real old. I got like pictures from my siblings, my nieces, my nephews, all that stuff. Old pictures of me when I was a little kid. And I came across something. Hey. I came across an image that that describes why Nipsey Russell's death has affected me greatly. Why it's 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 triggering something in me that I never felt before. And the image is this. Shit. This is an image of me at maybe about, I think I'm like four years old. I think I'm like three or four years old. And this is my father right there. That's my father. That's me. Okay. My father was killed when I was eight years old. Okay. On Christmas Eve. His death affects me to this very day, to this very moment. I even cried last night. I, when I was asleep last night, I even cried a little bit thinking about him, thinking about what happened. So when Nipsey Russell, when this Nipsey Hussle passed away, to me it was deeper than just a musician dying. It was deeper than a musician dying. To me, I thought about his wife, and I thought about his children. You know, a husband is gone and a father is gone. And all I can think about is this image. This is one of the few photographs I have of myself and my father of me as a boy. Because like I said, he he was he was killed at age eight. He killed when I was eight years old. So this is one of the few images, few pictures I have of him, he and I together. This is all I could think about when I think about Nipsey Hussle dying and his children. Moments like this. Okay? Because from this point forward, this little boy has never been the same. This little boy whole world was changed forever because someone decided to take this man this father away from his son this little boy would grow up never being the same ever this little boy was robbed of preteen advice teenager advice what do you do in high school, college? This little boy never got the ch- never got a chance to talk to his father about sex. Never got a chance to talk about the first time he got his heart broke or his first fight. This little boy was robbed of that because someone decided to take him away. He is no longer around to deal with the nightmares that this little boy still has to this very day. This is me as a little boy. The boy you see here is the man you see today. And I still feel the pain of that eight-year-old boy that that had his father taken away from him. I have siblings. I know they still feel the same effect. So. It's it's deeper with me. I remember. Hearing. Actually I'll show you. I'll even show you. Okay. This is the same day. 
This is the same day. Okay? The same day. That's my mother. That's my father. I remember hearing her cry late at night. Because someone killed her husband. Someone killed my father. I remember seeing her and my grandmother crying at his funeral. I remember the church. I remember I remember the service. I remember everything. Every single detail I remember. As clear as the sun is outside right now. That's what Nipsey Hussle's children will now have to deal with. That's what that's what Laura London, his wife, will have to deal with. She will she will go to sleep thinking about her husband no longer being there to tell a good night. Nipsey Hussle's children will spend the rest of their life never being able to hear their father say good night. Just simple, just simple stuff like good night or did you eat or how was school? They will never get a chance to hear their father say how was school? What did you learn today? You got a girlfriend? You got a boyfriend? How's your grades looking? Small stuff like that, Pe- things that you don't really you don't really pay attention to until you don't no longer have them. Imagine from like like I said, my father was killed on Christmas Eve, so imagine the next day being Christmas. Imagine how many birthdays you don't have with your with your father. How many, you know, the, your high school graduation, sweet sixteens, proms. Your first time driving. Your first day of college. All of those moments, those small moments, when you grow up to have children. That your father will never get a chance to see his his grandchildren. Things like that. That travel throughout time. That you will always have a hole in your heart because you know something is missing. And no matter how many positive men you have in your life, no matter how many uncles step in to take care of you, no matter no matter how many mentors you have, those are all good. But it will never take the place of having your father be right next to you to reassure you that everything's going to be okay. Once, once Nipsey was killed, the entire family was off balance. The entire family is off balance. Everything is unusual from that point forward. Nothing that will, nothing will seem right from here on out. And there's 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 not enough there, there there isn't enough my condolences there isn't enough I'm sorry's you can't buy that you you just can't because you realize how much you missed the people that kill the the person that killed Nipsey Hussle destroyed this. This you you destroy this bond. This 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 is what you, this is what you do when you take a parent away from their child. This is what you do. You sever this bond like this. You it is 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 deeper than music. It's deeper than you realize. You know? And you got to deal with the anger and the the questions, the uncertainty, the the why. Like, what for? Why me? Like, what did, I, what, what did my family do to deserve this? Like, it's, it's, it's different. It's, it's, I can't explain how painful 
It is. And the, the bad part about it is, it will never go away. It will never, that pain, that trauma, that PTSD, that, that's a little post-traumatic stress disorder. That's PTSD. Will never go away. His children and his wife will forever live in that moment. And all I could do is pray that his children, his wife, you know, that 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 they're, they're strong to endorse because it's it's a pain I can't describe. I mean it's one thing you no know, you no know, people die, but when you have someone taken from you like that, Nipsey was taken away from his family. Nipsey was taken, he was stolen away from his family, never to be seen alive again by his family. His mother, his father lost a son. His wife lost a husband. His children lost a father. The people in, the people in his community lost a leader. They lost a, a pillar. They lost an example. You have just killed an example of what a man should be. To all to all boys in that neighborhood, you have now just killed a prime example of manhood. To all the little girls in that neighborhood, you have killed a prime example of what a man should be to a woman. That's what you've done when you killed Nipsey Hussle. That's what happened when my father was killed. My father was killed. My example of manhood was taken. My example of what a man should be was taken. My example of how a man should treat a woman was taken. And I have I have I have, old, I have older I have older brothers, I have sis, younger sisters. An entire family, past, present, and future, was affected tremendously by someone deciding to take away a life. And for what? For what? What's the purpose? You kill someone over ego. And because of because of the ego of that person, a family is destroyed just because of ego. Just like, just like the, the group Goody Mob, you know the the group Goody Mob. The the the, the group Goody Mob stands for something. It says good mostly die over bullshit. The Goody Mob. The good die mostly over bullshit. That's what you did. Nipsey Hussle was a way out for that community that he grew up. He grew up in that community. He 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 was one of the few that made it out and came back and helped the community. And people from his own community, well, I won't say people, someone from his own community decided to take it upon themselves that I'm gonna take this person out because my ego. You have, see, stuff like that, you have set back an entire community because of ego. You have robbed a family. You have robbed generations. You robbed the elders of hope because the elders could say, okay, we have someone from the new generation that is doing it right. The elders can say we have an example of the younger generation doing it right. The generation after Nipsey Hussle can now say we have someone to look up to that we want to be like. I want to be like Nipsey Hussle when I grow up. 
That's what you do when you take away a prime example of what a man should be. Now, who are the young? Who are the youth going to look up to? Because you just killed them. You, the person who killed Nipsey Hussle, killed the way out of poverty. They, the elders, pray for an answer. Nipsey Hussle was the answer to the prayer, and someone killed him. And when you do that, this is what you destroy. I'm going to show it again. To his children, you have destroyed this. This is, what you, this is what you destroyed when you take a father away from their children. When you kill a father, when you kill a man and you kill a father, you take a father away from his children. And that child is permanently, permanently devastated. And you would think the older you get, that the better you are with dealing with it. I'm telling you from personal experience, this little boy grew up to be this man, and I still feel it to this day. Like I said, I cried last night, thinking about the day that my father was killed. I cried last night, and I'm, I'm 36 years old. My father died when I was 8 years old. I am 36 years old. I turned 36 on February, February 26th. My father died on Christmas Eve when I was eight years old. Hello. This, this is what you destroy because of ego. This is what you destroy. Okay? Ego will take a man from his children. Ego will take a husband from his wife and the children and and the wife and the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, the nieces, the nephews, the grandparents, everyone suffers. The neighborhood, everyone suffers. Off of one simple act, everyone suffers. When someone gets killed, everything that is person has in my time is taken. Yes. Yes. A part of me died on Christmas Eve. Absolutely right, James. A part of me died on Christmas Eve. The only the only reason the only reason I haven't gone insane. I'm not and I'm not exaggerating. The only reason I have not lost my mind is because I had something to put my emotions, my anger into. And that is my art. I, t- I think on my birthday, my, my, t- my, my 36th birthday in February, I call my mother. Just I, I, every, every birthday I have, every time my, my birthday comes around, I always call my mother to thank her for giving me life. And I was telling her that, you know, due to the fact that my father was killed and how it affected me. I am glad that I am an artist because I told, I told her, I said, had I not had, if, if I didn't have art in my life, I would have been a seriously troubled child. I know for a fact, had I not had art in my life during that time, I would have been a seriously troubled child. More than she realized. I told her. I told my mother this. Because I knew what that did for me. I mean, when my father died, my grades started to slip when my father died. I know exactly I know exactly what happened. When my father died, my grades started to fall. I became more introverted. I became harder to make friends with because I didn't want people to get close to me. I became very defensive. I try to save myself every single day. But that's what happened to me. I know this for a fact. That's what happened to me when I, when I lost my father. I became very, very pessimistic. I didn't want I didn't want anyone to get to know me 
although my, my although my nature my nature is to be very energetic and very open with people. But I was fighting against my nature and my circumstances. I was a very, very angry child. The only reason why I didn't I didn't express that anger outwardly and onto other people's because I had a way I had a way to put my I had a better way for my art to be manifested. Had I not had art, I'd have been a problem. I would have been a serious problem for everyone around me. I'd have been a serious problem for myself. This I know. Because every at, at any given point, I can replay every single scenario, scene by scene, from the moment my father was killed to this very day. I can replay where I was before my father was killed. I can replay the moments my father was killed. I can replay I can replay verbatim my mother taking a statement. We I was running across the street. I know it. I remember everything. <laughs> I remember I remember what the killers had on. I didn't see their face. I remember what they had on. That's how in depth it goes. And that is what Nipsey Hussle's children will have to deal with. They will have to deal with every single detail they were in. Turn to T'Challa. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. And what I also feel bad for is that they show the scene, they show the picture where Nipsey was taking a picture with a little girl. I don't think it was his daughter, but it was a little girl. Imagine what that little girl experiences knowing that she was in the place where the person she, she probably she probably to remember that, but I can't say that because there are things I remember way way early. I have a third degree burn I got when I was, I was four years old. I remember everything about that. See, I have what's called I have what's called a photographic memory and an eidetic memory. I mean, photographic means I can recall things I see photographic. Eidetic means I can recall, remember moments, instances. I have photographic and eidetic. I've always had that. So when it comes to events, I can recall in great detail what happened. And, you know, the person who killed Nipsey Hussle has no idea the damage that he has caused. He has no idea what he has done to that family, what he has done to that community. He has no idea what he has done to that community. That one act has shifted all events afterwards. From that moment forward, everything has been shifted. And it will never be the same. Never be the same. Because it'd be a whole lot of what be a whole lot of what ifs. What if Nipsey had stayed alive? What would happen had Nipsey lived? All those what ifs start to come in. Is what if what would have happened if my father had lived? It's it's deeper than people realize. When you take someone away from their family. You have permanently affected them in ways that can't be explained. It's, just, it's, 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 it's deeper. It's deeper than music. It's deeper than music. It's deeper than all that. It's deeper than gang affiliation. It's deeper than all of that. It's, it's deep. The pain that is, is, is caused. That's going to be caused. Because this, this, this ain't it. This, this isn't it. Yes, it's his children will forever be asking the question, what if? That's the damage he's done. He will his children will always be asking, What if? What if my father had lived? It's deep. So it's 
So I just want to express that. I'm going to show it again. This is an image I have. This is the only image I actually have of my father and I. I know there are more, but this is the only image that I have. This is the image, this is the photo I have of my father right now. Let me show you right close. Okay? That's me, I think I'm about like, I'm like three or four years old, and that's my father. Alright? So, this is what's at stake. When you, when people do the things they do, this is what's at stake. Alright? So, thank you all for listening, I just wanted to share that. And I will catch you all later. Peace.